Thank you. And uh, thank you to the ETUI for inviting Municipal Waste Europe to present uh, today on this important issue. And I would just pick up one issue that I heard in the previous panel, and that is that we have to have an overview. This is a, a transversal issue which uh, must be dealt with by all actors in the value chain if we want to have a positive outcome in terms of resource efficiency, in terms of um, social practices, which is not something we deal with every day uh, at Municipal Waste Europe, and um, create a circular economy. So two words about Municipal Waste Europe. Uh, we are a young organization made up of very experienced and older municipalities. Municipalities have been around for hundreds of years. Municipal Waste Europe is five years old this year. Uh, it was set up in 2009 to uh, give a voice to municipalities in the waste management uh, field, both in terms of um, providing services of general interest, therefore uh, giving them a role in waste management, and also, of course, to uh, respond and uh, advise the Commission on uh, waste legislation. So, green jobs, safe jobs. So the word safe uh, has been interpreted in two ways. One is health and safety, and the other one is sustainable. So safe in, in long term uh, in times. First of all, we have a study done in 2011 by uh, the Biointelligence, bio which tells us that simple implementation of the waste legislation will create 400,000 jobs by 2020. The same study also says that full Im implementation will save industry and municipalities, so that is in terms of raw materials and also in terms of cost of waste management, 72 billion euro a year. Add to that that very recently the plastics industry calculated that taking a voluntary commitment of sending zero uh, plastics to landfill by 2020 would save them 80 billion euro in avoided costs of primary materials. In addition to this, there would be an increase in the turnover of the recycling sector of 42 billion euro by 2020. So all of these figures, financial figures, demonstrate that there is a demand and there is sustainability in recycling and in jobs created by waste management. This means recycling, but it also means uh, from collection through to sorting, recycling, reuse, uh, and also communication. Communication I will come back to. Um, so, I think we need to take a little bit of a broader view of this. We start with the citizen who is the consumer and who is also the holder of the waste. When we're talking about municipal waste, it is dispersed. It's not in one industry. It is in everybody's house. If you talk about packaging waste, we create it every day. If we talk about uh, electronic waste, it's not every day. It might be once a month, it might be once a year. Depends on what it is. What we need to do as municipalities, because we have the responsibility to collect municipal waste for health and safety reasons initially, as someone mentioned on the previous panel. Um, and ultimately, we also have a co-responsibility with the value chain to implement European waste legislation, recycling targets and such like. <coughs> we are the first port of call for the citizen. If the citizen wants to recycle um, a, a long life uh, light bulb, and they don't know where to, do, where to recycle it. They're not going to suddenly think, oh, I live in Belgium, Belgium has Recupel, I'll call Recupel. They will call their local mayor or their local municipality. So we have to be involved as municipalities in the implementation of all of these waste management systems. There I come to your question mentioned by um, Jerry Vandenberg, which is uh, as a result of this realization So it is a complex um, issue which I will try to present in as simple uh, fashion as possible. 
municipalities have to have a role. In order to have that role, either they collect and recycle themselves with their own public company or their own in-house company, their own employees, or they can contract out to the waste management um, sector, the private waste management sector, or they can have public-private partnerships. In order to be able to do that, uh, the employees of the municipalities need to be informed as to what is waste management policy, what techniques are out there, what do they cost, what do they involve, what do they need to communicate to their citizens. In order to do that, they need to have communication with the production industry because the production industry has a responsibility legally to collect and recycle a percentage of their waste, that, of their product that reaches the waste stream. There has been an increased awareness over the last 12 months, slightly longer, as a result of, of uh, the revision of the waste directives between municipalities and producers that they need to work together in order to achieve the current recycling targets and certainly to achieve any higher recycling targets. In the middle of these two ends of the scale, there, is, uh, there are the producer responsibility organizations, which as Piotr mentioned earlier, um, have been created by extended producer responsibility applied to the producers. They couldn't have a Coca-Cola, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Pepsi bin everywhere, so they cre created one organization to implement their producer responsibility. These organizations, however, became independent they became non-transparent in many cases, so they were not effectively and, uh, and efficiently translating the funds taken from the producers into uh, the collection process of municipalities. So this is something that, that we've been working with and discussing with the private producers in order to try to resolve. And one of the resolutions of this is to, uh, to implement transparency into the PROs. From what I can see from our discussions, there is no trend towards more privatization of uh, the collection and treatment of municipal waste. We also have uh, the public procurement directives recently, which very much supported the uh, treatment of municipal waste by municipalities, by um, strengthening intermunicipal cooperation, uh, in-house procurement. We, there is um, uh, in, implemented in that new legislation an 80% rule, meaning that if municipalities have uh, or provide services to uh, non-municipal waste producers, <coughs> that can only be 20% of their overall um, service provision. So 80% has to be municipal or intermunicipal, and only 20% can be to the private sector. Okay. I have one minute left, so I'm going to make a couple of, uh, of other points. So sustainability of the jobs, I think, is not a question, whether that is uh, a job provided by the private sector or by the public sector, so municipal jobs. Um, but in order to get there, we must work with openly with all the actors in the chain. Uh, the benefits of working together and implementing um, efficient, effective collection and sorting systems is that we then sell materials to the European market, higher value for cleaner materials. We can only achieve that by communicating with the citizens effectively and feeding back information and also lower uh, waste charges, feeding back the, the income from the sale of the materials. Those materials on a European market will create stronger European companies and new jobs will be um, available not only in the waste management sector but also in the production sector because they have a local source of raw materials. <coughs> Important to keep in mind, which I learned at a, another recent seminar, is that we import as Europeans three times the amount of products and materials than we export. That means that 
the two thirds of what we import ends up in our waste at one time or another. So that is a huge potential for recovery of materials and growth of decent jobs. A couple more facts. It was estimated in 2012 by a um, European Commission study that 3.4 million Europeans are employed in eco-industries. That's across the board, not just waste. That is only 1% of Europeans. That's another growth potential. Willie, you asked me also about difficulties in prevention. I will just mention difficulties. Mm -hmm. The one difficulty is coordinating all the actors in the value chain in order to achieve these aims. Uh, it's dis we, we are talking about dispersed waste materials that we need to coordinate. Um, and we have the implementation factor. There are many member states who still landfill over 40% and still over 80%. If we don't get those members, put pressure on those member states to implement existing waste legislation, then we won't achieve the sustainable jobs or the decent jobs. Thank you. <laughs>